Good. Okay. Once again, I'm Dr. Carlisle. I'm at Northeast Georgia Medical Center. This is my nurse practitioner. This is Nicole Mulder. Uh, we are the Trauma and Acute Care Surgery Service. What we have here is our patient with an Abra Dynamic Fascial Closure System on. And what I want to talk about is the actual just every 48 hour wound back exchange. We're not really doing anything um, exciting today other than daily and every other day care. Now what we want to talk about is the way we have it set up, but then also these elastomers, we're going to look at possibly adjusting them if it's appropriate. And sometimes you don't adjust them. Sometimes it looks like the attention is already where it needs to be. Now what I want to do though is make the distinction between adjusting elastomers and tightening elastomers. You adjust them, you don't tighten them. And the reason you say that, it's really kind of more semantics, but it tighten tends to indicate a static stretch, whereas this is a dynamic process. And as you can see, even during the patient's respiratory cycles, this is moving as the patient breathes, which is what you want. That is part of why this is such a, a wonderful um, process and uh, a great appliance and why it works so well. Now, this patient has had this on for two and a half weeks. We have zero breakdown at the button surfaces, which is fantastic. Um, and then what we do have over here is we've got a G-tube and a J-tube. Now, if you'll notice, the elastomers are kind of short over here. This is the original length that we put in at the time of surgery when the fascial distance was 26 centimeters. Um, let's have the wound back. And now what we're measuring, and I'll show you the, the measurement here, and then I'll show it again when we take the wound back off. But now what's important about pointing this out, and the same applies as if you have an ostomy or any other device on a side, on one of the patient's um, sides, what you want to do is you want to adjust the elastomers on the opposite side. In other words, all adjustments to the elastomers are being made on this side only. And the reason is because you don't want to continue to pull this up against your drains because that silicone barrier that is underneath is going to actually wrinkle up and start pushing against these tubes. And you don't want that. So right now, because you want to go fascial edge to fascial edge, which is actually down in, down in here. It's not here. This is skin edge. You want to go fascial edge. And we'll show it again when we take this off. This is measuring at six and a half centimeters. So we need to go ahead and get the wound back off. So what you do, go ahead and just cut it here. And then if you would, Anna, pull that off for me. Okay, now you've broken the suction. Just pull it up, no big deal. Now you're gonna cut it, pair of sterile mayo scissors. You're gonna cut it at the skin edge. That's all you need to do. You don't wanna take the sterile dressing off the skin edge here. It's not necessary. It doesn't alter the function of the appliance. And this is actually protective to the skin. You don't want to continuously be pulling um, the sticky dressings on and off the tissue. It's going to break down. And it's, once again, it's not necessary. You can just continue to replace this over the top. It does get a little thick, but it's not hurting anything. This is just exudate, what you see the, the tissue inside here. Things you need to do this. You don't need a whole lot. You need a new wound vac, a basin, sterile basin with some saline. We use um, the large syringes sterile suction tubing and a yank hour and a pair of scissors. That's really all you need. Now, I do recommend a four quadrant towel, surgical towel drape, and four three quarter surgical sheets. I don't recommend a laparotomy drape. And the reason is because if you can see, the sheets actually cover better with no gaps. Laparotomy drapes tend to want a gap and you can see straight down onto the bed, that contaminates this because don't forget, we're in the ICU. We're not doing this in the operating room. So this is on the patient's bed. So what we want to do is go ahead and irrigate this out. Now, Nicole and I are doing this. If you have your mid-level, your nurse practitioner, your PA, there's no reason they can't help you do this. This does not require two surgeons to do this. I recommend one being there because you always want somebody to evaluate the abdomen. But you have a nurse practitioner who is well-versed in procedures and very comfortable. No reason at all that you can't go ahead and incorporate them into the, the daily changes and myofascial releases. So you want to go ahead and irrigate this. Just suction it clean. Both sides. Nothing in here looks even remotely questionable or concerning for infection. It's very clean.
And this is all typical etchy date that you get through the course of having this appliance. This is not at all unusual. And I like to go in and kind of suction all that out. So really that's all you need to do. You want to, I always like to take a look and just see how the tissue looks. It's looking very good. So now what you want to do, and when I prep over this, I use a chloroprep because there is no exposed tissue. Oh, one second. There is no exposed tissue. So a chloroprep over the top of this is really all that you need because this remains sterile on the inside. This has not been contaminated. So over the top, including the elastomers and the tails, this is a chloroprep. And so that's really all that you need. So I'm gonna take my elastomers. Now, obviously you see the hash marks on them. Well, when they are extended to two times the normal length, that's the correct attention that you need. So what you wanna do, is you wanna kinda of check and see where you are. So as it stands right now, we're right at two times the normal length. Now up here, looks like we're more like one and a half times. This is an important point. Don't be discouraged or dissuaded if you come back 48 hours later and you're still at two times the tension. You're gonna have stalling. That's a normal process. This has been on here two and a half weeks. We started at 26 centimeters and now, now we're at six. I'd say that's pretty successful. So obviously we're not taking it off. We're gonna keep going. We have already done the move twice. I'm gonna show you once again, this is a myofascial release. And the whole point behind this is you want to actually break the adhesions and the tension of the myofascial planes. So what you wanna do is you want your, your hands apart and along the lower portion of the abdomen side by side. You don't wanna go like this because what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna be kind of pushing into the abdomen. It doesn't help. You want a wide plane against that myofascial surface. Then you're gonna elevate superiorly and anteriorly, hold it for 10 seconds, and do a little bit of a wiggle. So go up, and you just do a little bit of a wiggle. And then this helps release that myofascial tension and helps mobilize that abdomen. And once again, you don't wanna get discouraged if you don't see a movement every single time. You're gonna have normal stalling. Okay, come down. And then you might come back two days later, four days later, and you've moved two centimeters. In fact, we had one that moved three centimeters one time. I mean, that happens. So don't be discouraged. Clearly it's working. So now at this stage of the game, I am gonna double check all of our elastomers. So we're at six here. We're at three and a half inferiorly and three and a half superiorly. So we're obviously making progress. So we'll check and see. I think a couple of these can be adjusted. This one up here. So what we're going to do, you're going to pull it up on one side only, the side that you're going to adjust the elastomer. Now, what you want to do is gently kind of pull it on that one from the one side, advance it 90 degrees. It's coming out of the skin at 90 degrees. Then you're just going to slide it right back into that button. Now, what you want to do is you want to double check and make sure your tension's appropriate. And in this case, it is. You want to measure and make sure that your tension is two times the length of a non-tensioned hash mark. So same thing here, and I've already checked this one out. I think that one, I think we could probably adjust that one too. Okay, you can pause it there, Sam. 